Hello, my name is Alex from the Advent Label Applicator. This is going to be a demonstration um, video for these, um, I believe we have four different types of containers that we're putting these um, water conditioner labels on that you've printed yourself. And um, we have a couple issues I just want to point out. Um, it's not going to be the most straightforward video. Um, some of the labels we only received um, three samples, actually four, we used one just to test. And Ideally, when you have a stack of labels in the machine, you want to have at least 10 labels because you're going to make your fine adjustments. Also, some of these labels weren't cut very straight. I tried to trim them up as best you can, but the accuracy of the machine is going to be based on how um, true these labels are because we're using guides um, to guide the label onto the container. So if there's any type of spacing or they're inconsistent, then the guides can't um, work as well as they can. So you can see here, I, I trimmed them as best I could. They're pretty square. So generally, you put your stack in here. We have our guides. They can be moved left and right, but we're usually you want to label the or have the labels in the center line of the machine. And the center line is this middle label feed tire with a plastic sleeve behind it. We've already adjusted it for this container, so I'm just going to go ahead and start labeling it. Um, we'll do the adjustments on the other containers. But you simply insert, and that's part of the problem. We have a very, very small stack. So let me just go grab these. Make sure they're the fan forward, make sure it's moving, and then we'll reset. There we go. So you insert a container, and it feeds a single label on. There we go. Pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and just label some more and see how it comes out. And generally with this type of container, you'll average about 24 containers per minute, fairly comfortably. It's just two hands. Guide it to the rollers, it will take it out of your hands. And then you can see a label goes on in about less than a second and just take it out. We have a standard overhead pressure arm that's applying pressure to this unfilled container so that allows it to um, pull that label on without any skipping. You can see, it goes on very nicely, nice and tight, looks really good. See, so let me go ahead and do a changeover. We only have two labels of this container. So um, I'm going to try it. It might not pull these two labels especially well, but again, in my center line, it doesn't have to be exact, but you can see I'm moving my guides in. You can see that's moving. I'm just going to side it to where I think it needs to go. Um, we could adjust these rollers, um, but just to um, make the video not too long, what I'm going to go ahead and do is adjust for the carriage. So this is, allows you to adjust for different diameter containers. You can go from 1 to 12 inches just by turning this um, carriage knob. Then I'm going to adjust the overhead pressure arm. You can slide it left and right. Just put it in the center line. A little bit of a gap on the stop. And what that does that prevents you from having to lift this up each and every time. So you just insert and it just pulls it into there. Okay. Let me go ahead and restack those labels. If you leave them there too long, they begin to curl, especially um, printed label stock. Let me open up those guides because we only have two labels there. Okay. So I'm going to turn it on, insert, and you can see that one label goes on very easily. Pretty straightforward. You can see I'm a little bit on the low side. So if I need to make an adjustment, see here, I would just move my guides. So I want to move it down. Okay. And we only have one label, so let me just get that started by hand. Let me see if I could get that. And it's not going to grab. So what I might do is put some have some spacers here. Let's see if we can get that one label to go on. There we go.
Insert. And there we go. Just like that. So um, we're going to pause the video. We have some phone calls that we got to grab, and then um, we'll come right on back and do the, the rest. Okay, so we have three more containers to go. Um, I did have made the adjustment to this medium-sized container before I set my guides here. And made my adjustment to the carriage knob and my overhead pressure arm and moved my guides. And we're just going to go ahead and label these up. See here? Those are really perfect. So we'll go ahead and um, get these other three. Now you'll see a little bit of a label prefeed. You might, for shorter labels, you could adjust your prefeed timer anywhere from zero up to ten. Usually, most labels are going to be a setting of five, but for these shorter labels, we might have to drop down to three. What you're trying to avoid is any um, prefeeding of the label. And that's perfect. So that's a setting of four. Again, those labels are going on really nicely, and if you can get them to be um, trimmed up, even the square they are, the more perfect it will be. So um, you can see it does a really nice job. And we have our final label. Let's see if we can get that one. It's our last label, so we don't have any labels underneath that. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, skip that, and we'll do our adjustment to um, our third container. Again, as we get closer and closer to one inch, your adjustments have to be a little bit finer. So, again, what we're looking for is to adjusting so the container is sitting on both sets of rollers, the stainless steel collars and the front white tires, hitting the trigger where you can hear a clicking sound and not touching this brass finger bar. This is where the labels are deflected up to the container. You can see we need to have the overhead pressure arm there. Usually I like to have a label in the carriage, but I'm just going to do it by sight because I don't want the labels to curl up. Okay. So um, another advanced adjustment is, um, yeah, is you can move those stainless steel collars and those white tires. They have a set screw and they can be moved left and right. Let me ahead and quickly demonstrate that on the stainless steel collars, just so I can show you the clearance. And that allows you to move your guides a little bit um, um, closer to the container. You could drop them down and get a better angle to give your fingers a little bit more clearance. You can see here there's a flat that we machine onto all these stainless steel shafts. And that just allows these guides to drop down a little bit further. So you can see there, now they're a little bit closer to the shaft. And that just gives our fingers a little bit more clearance. And you can always test your work just by turning it on, just inserting, and seeing how well it moves. You can see it's moving nice and smoothly, and that's what we're looking for. Okay. So I'm grab my stack of labels. A little bit tight. There we go. All right. I think a setting of three might be a little bit better. See there? I just adjusted it. Go ahead and insert. There we go. Pretty good. Um, I also noticed that you're using a hundred-pound label stock. I think on these smaller diameter containers, you might be better off with a eighty-pound stock because the grain of the paper wants to lift up um, the label because it, it's a tight, it's being wrapped around there nice and tight. So um, just something I think 80 pound will work a little bit better. You can see it's a little bit on the high side so we can certainly adjust it. So I'm going to move the container up a little bit. Move my guide. Pretty good. Now these um, black feet tires, there could be interference and we have that um, taken care of too by, um, let me take these labels out, we have a set screw on the black V tires. Take those out, we only have two labels left, so let me see if I could get this adjusted so we could just get at least one more label on. That's a set screw. 
and we're just simply going to move that out of the way. Generally, for most smaller labels, you only need the single feed tire behind this plastic sleeve. That's what creates the pinch point and allows that label to be fed through. Um, the wider, using the other two label feed tires help with wider labels, especially towards the edges. On certain paper stocks, they help quite a bit. Okay. Let's see if I can get that started. Okay. Pretty good. Turn it on. And there we go. So we moved it down. Really straightforward. You know, ideally, we would have more labels to work with, but um, looks good. So I'm not going to try and get that last label on, especially on a really small label like this. I'm just going to grab that. Okay. And then we'll do our final label. And this is the trickiest one, just because it's right at one inch. And it just requires... Um, you can hear it's still clicking, so that's good. And ideally, because it's a very small diameter, just need to toggle it. Sometimes it's not in the cards to um, get those set screws. There we go. All right. So once you get those set, oops, I get the right size here. Of course, the machine comes with the Allen wrench tool. Do make sure that you tighten those up back on the shaft. Um, if you don't, the, um, leave the set screw out too far. Um, you can stop the glue roller. It might hit the glue roller. So I always want to make sure that that's nice and tight Again, up against that shaft. You can see there, that allows me to drop it down really close to the um, shaft. And same thing with that one. And you can see the pressure or the weight of the trigger will pop it up, so you really need to use the overhead pressure arm or get that into play to do your final adjustments. A little bit of a gap. The smaller the gap, the easier it is to get the container to go in there. We could check our work. You can see it's very tight. A little bit on the close side to the to that cover. But it looks good. It's not jumping. It's nice and smooth. Okay. So now we just need to get our... Um... Again, we only have three labels here. <laughs> not the ideal situation, but... Let's get that. Well, let me turn it off. Let me get the container in there so we can see where it goes. Okay. be it. Okay. And it's hard to tell. I think that's going to be pretty good. I might be a little bit on the... move it down just a little bit. I'm trying to work fast. Okay. So insert. There we go. Now these labels are a little bit oversized. You can see that that's actually white paper going right to the edge. And you can see it's going right to the bottom. Ideally, you'll either have an overlap where it's an eighth of an inch, or you'll give yourself some space. I would probably recommend an overlap. And again, I think an 80 pound stock would work better. Let me go ahead and quickly get another label on here, just so we can see. There we go. And, and that's a really difficult container, but you can see it's fairly straightforward. Just fine-tune your labels a little bit, and um, it should be a really straightforward application. And you can see we did a changeover of um, five containers here. We did um, all those, those three sizes, these two right here. And then we did this one inch, very, very small, and usually a very difficult container, and it was um, pretty straightforward. So that's the Advent 200. Other things I should point out, it, it does use hot melt glue. Um, you turn on the heater in the morning and it takes about 90 minutes for it to warm up. Once the rollers turn nice and smoothly, then you can go ahead and operate the machine. Um, 
Maintenance is fairly straightforward. It's just keeping the rollers nice and clean and keeping the shafts. There's um, three oiling points on each side. And the label feed tires, you want to keep those nice and clean with alcohol. And um, that's usually about what you need to do. The, the key part is keeping the machine as clean as possible. If there's any questions, we can reach at 800-846-7716. Thank you.